if you want to know how you can make your own server locking system on Roblox Studio, you're going to have to make sure you watch this video all the way to the end to find out exactly how to make this. Hey guys and welcome back to this brand new tutorial on my YouTube channel and in this tutorial I'm going to be exactly showing you how you can make your own server locking system on Roblox Studio. So you might be wondering newbie what do you mean what are you talking about I will explain to you. So what I mean with a server locking system is that for example when airlines if they type for example in the chat uh, server lock on or something the server will lock and what that means anyone else who tries to join will not be able to join. And we're going, to, we're going to be making an uh, like an exclusion. We're going to be excluding admins. So there will be a, a little table of names of admins in your game. And then if they're an admin, they can bypass the lock system and they can just join the game because they're an admin. And you, you should trust your own admins. That's probably the reason for an admin. Yes. So that's exactly what we're, to, what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So if you do like this tutorial, make sure to give it a like if you like it. If you don't like it, please drop a dislike on the video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on the notification bell, become a member, do anything you want. And all I can say is that without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. So first of all, we need to set some things up. We need to make... Uh, we're going to be typing two scripts and we need a little GUI so the admins know in the game uh, if the server is locked or not because it's kind of hard to guess and yeah. So that's uh, what we're going to be doing. So there will be a little text label at the bottom right of your screen saying like server lock on or uh, on or off because that will really help people out a lot. So that's what we're going to be doing and we should start right away. So what do we need? So first of all, go to replicated storage and insert a remote event. And then after that, we are going to do general. We're going to be naming it general. If you want, you can name it anything else as long as you follow the video. So now we need a script in server script service. And I'm going to be naming the script server. And just exit the script for now because we need to set the game up first. Then go to storage GUI and insert a screen GUI and name it interface. Oh. F2 on screen GUIs don't really work. Interface, like that. And then after that, make a local script over here. And we're going to name it client because uh, the client is the, the Roblox player who's playing the game. And now all we need is uh, we can exit this script too for now. And we can go to text a label because it's a text label. Let me just do that. Uh, if you want, you can just drag it to the bottom. I'm just going to do that over here. Drag it to the bottom. I have a little plugin I can use, so I can just, I can just go to plugins. I can go to unit converse, uh, conversion, and I can just scale it uh, up or down. Uh, if you want the plugin, it will be in the in the description. You can just do what I did. Uh, you can click on the text label. You can go to plugins. You can go to unit conversion, and then click scale scale. That's all you have to do. Uh, the the plug plugin link will be in the description. So yes. Now uh, all we need to do is background transparency one. And yeah, just customize it. Text scaled. I'm gonna do Gotham black because I like Gotham black like that. And I'm just going to make uh, no text, or actually, I'm just gonna do visible off. This is all you have to do to set it up. And now let's get straight into coding.
So that was all of the coding for this tutorial and we have now entered the recap section. So what are we going to do now, newbie? We are going, I'm, we, well, I am going to be explaining uh, what every single line does. So over here we are requiring some services and we are making a global uh, variable called local, uh, locked, sorry, locked, to determine if the server is locked or unlocked. We have an admins table, the whitelist table, so if you are in this table, you are basically immune to every single thing over here. So you can bypass the lock system, you can uh, lock the server or, un or unlock the server, it doesn't really matter. But if you're in this table, so for example, if you want to add more people, just do this, hello, and the semicolon, uh, whatever, more, more, oh, that doesn't work, uh, way more people, like that. So this is how you do it. So I'm, I, I mean, I'm all by myself, so I'm just going to do uh, newbie.rpdev, because that's my Roblox username. We are checking if the player joined. If the player joins, we are immediately checking if the server is locked or unlocked. And true means that it is locked. We are checking if the player is not an admin. So if they are not an admin, we will put this in the console. We will put that they tried to join, but the server is locked. And we will kick the player because they're not an admin and the server is locked. We are going to check if a player has chatted in the game. If they have chatted, we are checking if they're an admin. If they are an admin and the message is going to be lock on, we will turn the lock on because one, the message is lock on and two, they're an admin. And we are going to be firing a remote event to, to put like, you know, at the bottom right, like server lock is now on, you know, you get the point. If it is the opposite, so lock off, we will just uh, put the lock away and we will unlock the server basically. And we will just put, you know, like server lock off like that. If when you join the game, we will immediately let you know if the server is locked or unlocked. So if one of your other admins already locked the server and you join, it will just say server lock is true. So because usually if you won't, if you don't add this line, it will just say like label or something, something weird. You don't want that. So that is exactly what we did over here. Now in the client script, we are requiring replicated storage. We are checking if a remote event has been sent to the client. We are checking for an argument and a statement. So if there is no argument, we're not going to do anything. If the argument is the same as lock, then we're going to make sure you can see the text. So uh, text label that visible is because it's true. Because if it's not true, you'll you're not going to see anything. You're just going to be stuck. You're going to be you're going to be sitting there like what? Yes, we don't want that. So we're just going to do text label that visible is because it's true every single time to make sure. And we will set the text to server lock and then true or false. And then true means it is on and false means it is off. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play the game and demonstrate the lock on and lock off. Only the words. As you can see, I joined the game. And, you know, in the server script over here, let me just find it. The lock is off, so it's false. And as you can see over here, server lock, colon, false. So what if I just type something random, hello. As you can see, nothing happens. Lock on, three, two, one, boom. As you can see, the server lock is now set to true. Basically, it's a really simple system. And now you're like, nah, okay, like uh, the meeting is over, some developer meeting in your airline game, whatever. You could just do, okay, yeah, people can join now, lock off, boom. And now everyone can join your game until the server is full because Roblox will then create a new server. Okay. A lot of crap. So if we want to put it on again, lock on, boom, and now the lock is on. Let me just get one of my friends and we can test this in real game. So my friend will not be an admin. My friend will be a regular user on Roblox, which is not an admin table, which is not an admin of the game. So let's see what happens if it's true or false. As you can see, I am joining the actual game right now. And as you can see, the server log is set to false. So one of my friends is going to join really, really soon. So let's see what happens when she joins. And as you can see, the server log is false. So nothing big should happen. She, sh she should just be able to join and then play the game. So let's wait for my friend really, really quickly. Okay, as you see, she is joining. And there we go. There is my friend. And as you can see, she completely, uh, she completely joined. Nothing special happened. As you can see, it is set to false. So I'm going to turn it on and then I'm going to ask her to leave. So lock on. Can you leave and rejoin? She's probably going to say yes because I... Okay, yes. Thank you very much. So she's going to leave and she's going to rejoin. And then you'll notice that she's going to be getting kicked. Okay, as you can see, she just left. Let me just get the console because we print if someone leaves. 
So let me just do that. Okay, so let me just wait for that. Oh, and as you can see, boom, she joined and she immediately left. So as you can see, uh, my friend Smalltalk tried to join, but the server is locked. As you saw, the server is locked. So I'm going to turn it off again. Oh, let me uh, lock off. False. Let me just, uh, can you rejoin one more time? Oh, there you go. Oh, there we go. Okay. As you can see, she rejoined. It is set to false, and because it's set to false, she can now join back. So this is the exactly the system we wanted. So if you did in fact enjoy this tutorial, make sure to give it a like if you like it. And if you don't like it, please drop a dislike on the video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on the notification bell, become a member, do anything you want. And all I can say is that my name is Newbie, and I say, peace out.